Right, welcome. Today we are looking at the Gordon Growth model, right? So we came off the last one, which is the discount dividend model, which basically showed us, uh, hey, we have a price in the next period, uh, and we have the D, D1 divided by 1 plus R plus P1 divided by 1 plus R, okay? Now, what we have to do, and every time we figure this out and we work out this dividend discount model, is that we look at the price in the next period, right? But where does that price itself come from? Okay, so what we're going to start off with is assuming a zero growth condition. Okay, now if we have zero growth of dividends, we're talking about growth here. Keep in mind we're talking about dividends, growth in the amount that is actually paid out to shareholders. Okay, so if we have a zero growth model, right, where dividends are not growing, is our price would be equal to this here, D divided by R. Now, why should you already know that that equation? Is because that is just a perpetuity formula. Okay, all this is here is a perpetuity, which means that that dividend payment is constant over the life of it. We just discount all those back, d divided by r. Okay, and and that's that's the basic starting point for the Gordon growth model. Right, also known as the constant growth model. Okay, so if we are now looking at constant growth. Okay, so we're looking at constant growth, which means that it's growing, but at a constant rate. Okay, our formula is given by this here. Our, our price today is equal to D1 divided by R minus G. Okay, and what we see here is that it still has that same component right here, right? We still have D divided by R, right? We still have D divided by R, but what we don't have is um, we have to add in that growth rate, right? That R minus G. Okay. Now, when we think about this, is that what happens to the value of P when R decreases? Okay. So our question here is, what happens when, when R increases? Just basically in a basic perpetuity, when R increases, what happens to the, the present value? We take increase risk. That means that R on the bottom increases. That means the entire statement is decreasing. So that means P0 is following, right? We know that. When we increase our discount rate, that is going to decrease our present value. Okay? So on the other hand, right, we have a falling R. That means the price is going to rise. Now just think about this intuitively for just a second. If we have an increasing growth rate, right? A company's dividends are growing. What should happen to the price of the company? We think that growth was 2%. Now we think the growth is 5%, right? Do we think the company should be worth more? Yes, it should, right? It's going to pay out more to shareholders. It's going to be increasing growth. That's good, okay? Right? And so when we look at this, is that D divided by R minus G, right? When G is increasing, what is happening to the entire thing? Okay, G is a negative number, so that means that the bottom portion right, is falling, which means the entire thing itself is rising, which makes sense, right? When we have an increase in growth rate, that means the price of the company is going to go up, okay? So um, the next step here is we're still looking at P0 equals D1 divided by R minus G. The important part to remember here is that we're looking at our dividend in the next time period, right? The dividend next year, right? Not this year, okay? So what we don't have, what we don't typically have is we don't typically have the dividend next year because that's looking into the future. But we will always have what the dividend is today, right? We're always given the dividend today, which is D0. And in order to get to D1, how am I going to figure that out? Well, simply put, I'm just going to take 1 plus G, right? We're going to take our dividend today, and we're going to multiply it by 1 plus our growth rate. Very similar to the way that we would do this if we put money into a bank account and was, we're earning interest on it to see what, how, what it was worth next year, okay? So this part right here is equal to the same thing, which is D0 times 1 plus G divided by R minus G. So what we'll do now is we'll work through a, a quick examination of this, right? We have ABC Incorporated, okay? We have ABC Incorporated, and ABC Incorporated just paid a dividend, right? And this is something very important to keep in mind. If we say just paid a dividend or they're expecting dividend, 
think about what time period it's actually coming in, right? Is if we pull up Yahoo Finance or, or Google Finance, we look and see, all right, this is what the dividend is. The dividend is currently paying three dollars, right? We can look at that and say, all right, that's what the value, um, that's what our dividend is this period. So we have to come up with D1, right? Which remember D1, our dividend next year, is going to be equal to our dividend this year multiplied by one plus G, right? So that's gonna be three uh, plus, and let's say here, I gotta write in a growth rate here. Let's say our growth rate is 3%, okay? So this is gonna be three times 1.03. So we know that uh, that D1 is equal to three dollars and nine cents. Okay, we know our growth rate is three percent, and let's say that we have an interest rate of of eight uh, percent. Okay, so we now have enough information that we can take all this stuff here, right? This is all stuff that we can find pretty easy, right? We just open up a couple things, we pull them out, and we say, all right, what's the value of this company? Okay. So we're going to say that the value of ABC Incorporated is going to be all of this stuff together, okay? And so we're trying to figure out what the value is for our own purposes and then compare it to what the price that we could buy it for or sell it at, et cetera, okay? So what we're going to have here is that we're going to have uh, D1, right, divided by R minus G, which in this case is 3.09, is D1, and that is going to be divided by 0.08, minus 0 0.03. Now keep in mind what we see here is that the interest rate and the growth rate, those are all in decimal format, right? 8% is 0 0.08, 3% is 0 0.03, okay? So this is going to be 3.09 divided by 0 0.05, which tells us our price today is $61.80, okay? So if this, if this stock is currently selling for $67, should we buy it? No. We think it's actually worth less than the price that it's trading for on the market, okay? And this is a basic way that we are going to be using the Gordon Growth Model. Now, I encourage you, if you haven't already, is go on harpit.com, work those problems on there, on the Gordon Growth Problems, the constant growth problems, and make sure you can get the right answers. And if you can't get them in this in the, uh, the stock value pl playlist, there's other questions that we can work through and we can figure this out, right? And, and actually look at those examples, work them through. It's really important that we're able to, to understand what is going on with this, okay? Now, the next thing we're gonna be doing is moving into a non-constant growth model. Um, which is basically combining the, the uh, dividend discount model and the constant growth model um, so we can look at how things, how growth rates can change over time.